Greetings, travelers. Esper here. There are plenty of sources out there that teach you the rules of your RPG of choice. As well, you can read lots of concepts and ideas as to how the game should be played. While these all have their place, I'd like to show you three things you can do right now in order to breathe life into your game. Number one, look at a monster or villain in a new way. Monsters, enemies, foes, creatures, villains, no matter what your campaign style, the story cannot exist without conflict. But let's turn things round and say conflict cannot exist without story. In other words, without a meaningful backdrop, conflicts and challenges become shallow, even hollow. Instead of running the most expected version of a monster, try looking at it and expressing it in a slightly different way. I'll give you a few examples here. First would be creatures such as hobgoblins or war bands or conquerors. For this archetype, we think of organized warriors or soldiers. They have a fortified home base, they follow a hierarchy of commanders, they have goals, they use weapons and armor, and they want to conquer or otherwise dominate the land. Let's use our imagination to play around with the concept of this typically rigid humanoid. What if their home base has been destroyed, their leaders have been slain, and they are now wandering without purpose and on the brink of starvation? What if a band of hobgoblins has seceded from its greater tribe because instead of conquering the local mining village, they are determined to build a ship and sail off to some fabled island? What if there is a split among members of an order dedicated to the god of war and conquest? One of the war priests has led a rebellion because the order's leader has abused his power far too much. Let's also look at some high-powered adversaries, thinking of things like dragons, sphinxes, liches, vampire lords, beholders, aboleths, any other mighty being. This antagonist is typically portrayed as the power-hungry villain who will stop at nothing to continue its evil plot. If you want to add some life and depth to this stereotypically black-and-white circumstance, consider giving the monster quirks, flaws, or even a surprising twist. What if the Lich has lost interest in involving himself in wicked schemes? He has lived for so long that he no longer sees the point in meddling with the affairs of other people. He would rather watch from afar, studying the peculiar lives of mortals and gathering their secrets. Perhaps the Lich now aspires to be some mythical sage entity who dwells within the ethereal mists between the plains. What if the dragon can no longer breathe fire and its voice is barely above a whisper? It has wasted much of its treasure hoard seeking a cure, only to find none. It now accepts its fate, and has turned its interest to constructing a massive city within its mountain. What if the Beholder lost its central eye and most of its eye stalks in a deadly fight against another Beholder? For the first time in its life, this monstrosity is grappling with concepts like shame, lament, loss of power. It is obsessed with reclaiming a sense of purpose, and is now looking to form a network of spies, explorers, and researchers. These ideas could go on and on. I encourage you to look at an entry in your monster manual, bestiary, or rogues gallery, and muse over the ways in which the adversary could deviate from what is expected. When you turn and twist things around, you will reveal new layers of interest. The second thing you can do is to run a session for just one or two players that does not involve combat. A typical gaming session goes something like this. Three to five player characters take part in an adventure ran by a game master or dungeon master. They explore part of a fantastical world, fight against their opponents, and uncover part of a storyline, along with gaining awards like experience points or treasure. But not every gaming session has to be typical. What if half the players cannot make it one evening? What if everyone wants to do something a little different? What if the GM hasn't had time to prepare an adventure? What if one of the players asks, 
Who is my character, really? Try putting the brakes on the usual action pace of the campaign and explore the vast possibilities of character backstory, world building, and storytelling. If the GM truly has nothing prepared, don't worry. Have the GM and a player or two do some brainstorming, followed by role playing. It is as simple as this. Guys, I don't have an adventure or any combat encounters prepared for tonight. However, I have been wondering about your characters. Do you want to take a look at your backgrounds or character traits and see what we can come up with? Discuss ideas about where the characters came from, what they believe in, what motivates them. Your goal is to not only conceptualize, but to also play a short session right then. You do not need combat in order for the session to have complexity, to have tough decision points and interesting moments. Just play off the ideas a player has about his or her character. It could go something like this. My character, Rowan, has always followed the god of storms. At least, that's what my character sheet has always says. But I want him to have a change of mind or a religious epiphany and to change over to worshipping the god of trickery. The GM responds, well, what challenges would that present Rowan? Has his family always worshipped the god of storms? Is his father perhaps a priest of the storm god? Or perhaps the god of trickery is outlawed here in town? In other words, nothing is going to move in an even straight line with your story. Straight lines are boring, and they often lack storytelling potential. In the example I just gave you, you already have the seeds for a great short session that makes a personal difference to the player character. And do not forget, these sorts of personal sessions that focus on story and character development, on skill usage, on role playing, they can also feature experience point rewards. Personally, I try to always reward XP when characters learn or grow or make their way through some sort of meaningful challenge. The third idea is to create a small regional map. One of the best ways to cultivate inspiration is to create a map of a region in your world. Take note that this map is of a region, not a kingdom or a whole continent. I'm talking about a scale in which one inch on the map represents one to ten miles of distance. At this scale, you can actually add in details and specific features like villages, ruins, caves, mines, strongholds, temples, shipwrecks, monster lairs, abandoned settlements, dungeons, roadside inns, basically anything you can think of. As well, when you draw a hill or mountain or woods, you know it is actually that specific mountain or woods, as opposed to when you're looking at a whole world map in which such icons merely represent a region of hills or mountains or woodlands. Let your imagination wander. Think about the routes people in the world might take to get from one place to another. Think about what routes the player characters might take. For example, when the PCs travel from the town of Willowbrook to the town of Nesmain, they must choose between traveling through the forest, the marsh, or upon the river. Or should they need to get past a mighty mountain, they must choose between taking a high pass where a cyclops dwells, or going through the dark tunnels underneath the mountain. Do not be afraid to start naming the locations on your map right away, even if you don't yet know what exactly is taking place there. In fact, merely giving a location an evocative name can spawn ideas. Let's say... You draw a lake with a complex, irregular shape that somewhat resembles the shape of a hydra. That prompts you to name it Hydra Lake. Well, is there actually a hydra layer somewhere at this lake? Perhaps a multi-headed creature lives in the lake that's not necessarily a hydra per se. Or perhaps the name simply refers to the shape of the lake. But there's a tribe of lizard men that live in the wetlands and coat their spear tips and arrowheads with snake venom. You can also look at real-world regional maps to get ideas for names or terrain features. For instance, I just pulled up the Strait of Gibraltar, where a mere 8 mile wide channel of ocean separates southern Spain from Morocco, Africa. Taking inspiration from this, we could create a map of a similar region, 
and then imagine the stories or conflicts that could arise from two rival cultures existing in such a proximity. Once you have put a variety of little details onto your map, take some time to reflect and muse. You will find that merely looking it over can spark ideas for adventures and plot lines, as well as the cultural flow and history of your world. Hope these ideas are helpful for you and allow your tabletop role-playing games to be even better. If you enjoyed this video, check out my channel and my other videos and share with your friends. May your adventures be many.